Hi, right, hello. My name is Matthew Bohannon. I'm the CEO of Dr. Pepper Snapper Group. I'm Andrea Bersiaga, and I'm the CFO of Dr. Pepper Snapper Group. My name is Cedric Deji, and I'm a head of marketing and sales department. I'm Zahid Sayed. I'm a member of the Human Resources. I'm Francisco Mendez, the senior account. So, here at Dr. Pepper Snapper Group, uh, we take a lot of pride in our philanthropy work, and we believe in giving back to the community. And, giving back to underprivileged communities at that so that children or adults who don't have the means that uh, most Americans have can have something to look forward to and, and to learn and to better their lives. So we put together a science fair project that at an underprivileged school in DISD, which is one of the lowest uh, performing middle schools in the country. So that's why we decided to pick Billy Earl Dave Middle School. So one of the reasons that we chose this program here at Dr. Pepper's Medical Group is because it's something that I personally can relate to. Growing up from a family of six and being the oldest sibling, I wasn't as fortunate as my brothers or my sisters. And um, I went to a very poor middle school. I was exposed to drugs, fighting, bullying. Um, I literally would witness kids doing drugs right in front of me. And they're 12, 13 year olds. And this is a very important time for them because they're growing up so we can either teach them to go in the right direction or in the wrong direction and a lot of these habits are things that they pick up because that's what they see and we want to encourage them to step out of that comfort zone and to teach them that they have potential and they can be somebody um, and I know this because as a, you know although I wasn't involved in drugs or fighting or anything um, I yearn to learn so a lot of these kids are either afraid of what other students might think to be smart or to learn things and um, it's something that it's very important because we want to lead our youth in the right direction and you know it's very important. Okay so let's talk about the topic of Snapper Philanthropy and uh, for the, the second consecutive year we made it to the civic 50 list just because we are one of the top 50 SAP 500 company for best use in time, talent, and resources. And for 2015, our goal is to reach 100,000 hours of volunteers hours, and then donate more than 10 million to cash contribution um, to charitable cash donation. And our philanthropy um, basically is organized around four main points. The first one being fit and active lifestyle. We're trying to teach. Um, Family, we want family to, to, to have uh, a physical activity, daily physical activity as a priority, environmental initiatives, and emergency relief. We're helping those um, affected by disaster in our community and within our company. Hometown giving, we're trying to give back to um, the community where actually we, um, we're doing business and where people, you know, those those ones that work with us, wherever they live, we try to give back to them. And Dr. Pepper Snapper Group already, you know, for this year, uh, has already made more than 10.6 million in cash donation and more than 2.8 million in product donation for just to support our philanthropic um, goal. As you see, we already surpassed our goal for 2015 and we plan to, to to do more. We like to give back to the community um, because they're helping us, you know, as a company, and we are also helping them. So as you see, we are pretty generous in that And so one of the main reasons that we um, picked this area in Dallas is because we are from Texas. We were born and bred. Our company brand is from uh, Dallas, Texas. So that's a, a reason that we picked the underprivileged school in DISD is because we want to give back to our community and to our hometown giving. So that's why I picked our, uh, our school. And uh, a lot of the problems in DISD are, there's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of students lack ambition. Um, they have no drive to succeed at the collegiate level because of the lack of parenting at home, and they don't, they don't, they don't have any role models or mentors to look up to. I mean, they they run in the streets, they're gang banging, they're doing drugs, 
looking for fights, trying to have sex, and I mean, they just don't have the role model that a lot of us grew up with, and so we want to give back to that. We want to better the community. And the efforts by the teachers are very minimal because they, they don't get paid enough. Uh, you, you produce on how much you're paid. And if you're not paid anything, you're not going to produce, you're not going to put the effort into the students. And there's, like I was saying before, there's, there's no exposure to college of professional scientists, and that's why we want to use the STEM students, the science, technology, engineering, mathematicians, to, to give these students something to look up to and to strive to be at the college level and to, to be a professional of their own one day. And uh, Billy Day Middle School ranks 1,834 out of 1,920. That's on the bottom level of the spectrum for middle schools. And they could really use some help. And that's why we want to step in and give them what we've had in our past. So for this project, our focus is on seventh and eighth graders from the Billy Earl Day Middle School. There will be a total of 50 participants, 50 students from the school participating in this event. There will be a basic first come, first serve sign up for who wants to participate. It will also be up to the parents to, uh, sign, to sign off these kids. So with uh, 50 students, there will be 25 group, groups of two, and there will be one UTD volunteer student men mentor. That will be a, a UT undergraduate uh, majoring in the STEM program that will be science, uh, technology, uh, engineering, mathematics. They will be helping out these students in, these, in this science fair project. And it will be also a basic first come, first serve sign up for these students who want to participate. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be great benefit for them. So one of the uh, reasons we decided to do this program, as I mentioned before, these kids are not exposed to many things or they haven't had the opportunity to be an environment or a learning environment, even at home. They're not introduced to reading the books or, you know, that most of the time they spent, you know, watching TV, playing video games, playing, you know, instead of studying. So another thing is that this program will make them be goal-oriented to be able to start a project and to finish it. Um, another is to be team players. So as Zay uh, mentioned before, they'll be paired up in groups of two. So it'll kind of teach them to have each other's back and to support one another. Um, another thing is that they'll strive for college. Um, there are, you know, these kids live in the low-income area, so their parents maybe don't have that college education. And it's important for them to know that that is an option for them. Um, dedication. Dedication, this also teaches them to be passionate, to know that they can dedicate their effort into a project and to succeed. Um, a mentor relationship, not only is this going to benefit the volunteers, but it's going to benefit the students. They're going to have a role model. Like I said earlier, they're in the ages of 12 to 14, and it's a very important time for them right now. And I mean, to have somebody there to support them and some, you know, to relate to something fun is a great thing. Um, lastly, it'll teach them to have hope. Um, to that, you know, they can be something and they can succeed at something, not to be afraid to kind of open up and do what they're good at. Um, commitment, um, they need to stick with something and it kind of goes back to, you know, dedication and to be goal oriented. And lastly, oh, confidence, I'm sorry. So it will teach them to be confident. Like I said earlier, a lot of these kids don't want to learn. They don't want, they think that being smart is kind of silly. So it will kind of teach them to have confidence that they can be smart and that it will take them somewhere. And if they won't fall into that repetitive, you know, routine where they're just not doing their homework, playing video games, and, you know, even picking on somebody else just because they are smart when maybe deep down they do want to do something. So for the actual science fair itself, there will be a lot of hype and promoting done by the faculty at the school as well as us at Dr. Pepper during the school year to get students to be involved. Later on during the school year, we will actually have the official sign up for the students who are willing to participate. February 1st will be the first day of the program. That will be when the student mentors and the students will be drafted into each, other, each group and they'll get to meet each other and know each other. So the project is set to last for five weeks, and at the last week will be the official science fair project. That will be held here at UTD. And it's going to, so for each group, it will be, the so topics in the science fair that will be covered will be pretty limited. So we just 
we want students to engage in more hands-on projects such as engineering, aerodynamics, just material sciences, or something technological like product, electronics, anything computer-based like that. We want students to do those types of events. Something like micro microbiology or biochemistry is a bit too extreme for middle schools. We don't want the UP members to teach to do a bunch of that. So we're going to introduce the resources that are necessary to complete a project. Um, Dr. Pepper likes to take the right steps. So one of the things is that we do, before we do start the program, we do want to uh, make the parents and the students aware of what they're going to get into. We want to send out consent forms. Uh, and now all of these consent forms are, you know, give permission for them to attend the program for transportation, any health problems they have, or who they should contact, as well as, you know, if they do win the science fair, they can get their picture taken, they can get a video taken, and they could be published. Okay, the transportation. For our STEM volunteers, we will get uh, school buses from Dallas County. They will go from here from UTD to Billy Road Middle School and back. And for students, since it's going to be an after school, we will have transportation for them as well for, for school buses. In case uh, there is something that happens. We will have uh, alternative transportation for DART. The DART does stop uh, 10 minutes of walking distance from Billy Earl Middle School. In the location, it is at Billy Earl Bay Middle School. It is uh, for two hours, for about maybe two or three times a week, for about a month. This will occur, like I said, after school from 4 to 6 p.m. All right. Um, as you know, there will be no fair, uh, no, no science fair context without you know great prizes. And uh, Dr. Pepper, like throughout the years, has been you know a great, great company. So we have a network of you know partners, and then they, we 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 team with um, a lot of different companies to help us you know have those great prizes. Right here, the first prize will be. Um, the five thousand scholarship for both of those um, children, and then a trip to the NASA offered by the NASA. They're going to leave Dallas to go to Houston, um, spend like two days visiting the NASA, hanging out with astronauts, and you know fun stuff like that. And the second prize, it's to MacBook. The third prize, to iPad, uh, to iPad Mini. Fourth prize offered by the Pirot Museum, uh, Museum of Natural and Science. That's a membership. They're going to get a membership. And the fifth prize, it's a year supply of Dr. Pepper project. As you know, we just Dr. Pepper, so we're going to give them some product. And the sixth prize, it's a number. Um, it's a 12 month subscription offered by the other American Science Magazine. And we want to we wanted to include like a special prize. It's a special activity prize. Um, just um, it's offered by the Art and Culture Texas magazine. And this special prize is just you know not it's not so much science oriented. It's art oriented because those kids they can just you know come up with something great, something uh, nice, and it's not. <laughs> Bit like this prize, is, it's not a science. Like like I said, it's not from science, but it can be something that we want to give them just to, to, to let them know that they participated, they did something nice, and then we just want you know, to, um, to give uh, a prize for it. And then the volunteer compensation, basically each student, each volunteer will have a 500 stipend at the end of the spring semester. And then the first, the first top, the top two, the first and second class will be granted a semester-long internship uh, in Dr. Pepper um, Snapper Group within our research and development team. And I think um, this science fair um, program will benefit the volunteer in the sense that it will strengthen their coaching, um, personal, and leadership skills. And so the way the science fair contest is going to work is we're going to take 25 STEM students from UTD and they're going to volunteer to uh, Billy Earl Dave Middle School for our fine science fair contest. And then there will be 50 students from the middle school and two of those, there will be two students per team and then one UTD STEM mentor per two students. So there will be 25 teams competing for these prizes. And for the uh, financials and uh, expenses for our project, 
As you can see, the transportation is roughly $3,500. Materials is $3,200, give or take. And then um, for the volunteers' compensation, that's our biggest expense almost, except for the prizes, is 12500 And then the prize value, which we have help from our corporate sponsors because we've been in business for so long, and we've created uh, great relationships because we've been in business for over 40 years. And so the total cost is around $32,900, which isn't a lot compared to last year. We gave over $10 million in philanthropy events. So this is very minimal, and we could make a huge impact on the lives of uh, young children who are un underprivileged and don't have the opportunity to do a science fair project to the extent that we'd like to give them. And here at Dr. Pepper, we like to do good things with flavor. We'd like to give y'all each a little bit of flavor. I'll <laughs> compliment. <laughs> system and that it's just very poor and we'd like to step in to our hometown giving and give back to them. I think you had a question back there. Yeah, um, back to like you said the parents uh, with the demographic I think in that area not a lot of parents really uh, I mean if it's really underprivileged they really don't have enough for their kids do you think that they'd even be able to afford the fifty dollars to pay for the Oh they don't have to pay for anything. Pay. We're gonna we're gonna sponsor it all. Okay. It's, they each that's get about hundred and twenty dollars per project to spend on expenses. So that's what was the fee per person then you said? We'll we'll give them a budget of hundred and twenty dollars per project. Okay. So the two students per project, so they get hundred and twenty dollars to spend together. Yeah, there's no there's and, no, okay. no cost for yeah. 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 And it's all right. just, yeah, it's yeah, all free and uh yeah, it's it's free. Huh. Based on the 25 that you said you guys are going to get, don't you think you're limited into, because most science fair classes that I know in high school, middle school, is just pre AP students that do science fair. So you're already limiting yourself to kids that actually want to do science fair, that actually like to compete. Yeah, that, those are the students that we want, because we, we want to give them, if they're going to get a scholarship, uh -huh. we want them to actually strive to do a good project, to want to be there, to, to be punctual, to be on time, and to be at the every, we, there's 24 sessions for the science fair. We meet three times a week for five weeks, and it comes out to 24 times. So we want the students that are going to be there every time. So, and, oh, so yeah. when you do that, how do you help the kids that are, because you guys are trying to raise up um, the middle yeah. from being important stuff? So yeah, good. very underprivileged. Yeah. They, they rank, I mean, at the bottom of Texas for middle yeah. schools. And so what it's going to do, it's going to provide team building skills. They're going to have a partner that they're going to have to agree with on the project. They're going to have a mentor that they're going to have to come together and present to the mentor what they want to do. And the mentor is not going to say, no, you're doing this project, you're doing that. They're going to have to decide as a team 
I know what you mean in your question. Yeah. It is hard to target, though, the lower, I guess, I don't want to say educated students, but the ones that are, aren't in pre-AP or you know, AP classes. Like I said, you can't force these kids yeah. to be in the program. You okay. have to have the parents consign them to be in there. So I've attended an after-school program before, and if there's only about 40 kids that make it because the parents aren't aware, they don't want their kids to be in that. A lot of parents don't want them because these kids have siblings. They want the, kid, the kids to take care of them. So it's kind of hard in that way, and I see what you mean. But if we can target the kids that actually do want to learn as well, that'd be really beneficial then because maybe they don't have the same opportunities. So it can kind of target both kids, if, you, if that's what you mean. We hope to target all of the DISD mills because we hope this kicks off a huge science fair contest in Dallas County. So basically, you guys are studying an example for all the other students, right? Yes. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, you know, like, a lot, like I said, a lot of these kids don't have confidence and they're scared to try things like these. So maybe if they see other kids doing it, or maybe one of the kids that, you know, doesn't do good in school but does it and then really likes to do it'll kind of motivate them to do something. And, you know, we have incentives, we have prizes and all that. So it, it's not, it, it can't go wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah, it's not going to go back. And just to add something, only the first year, and we plan, like, if it's really um, popular to, to keep doing it, like, each year, so maybe, like, open to more children next year, because we start with 50 children um, from the 7 and 8th grade, and then we can go, you know, more bigger, we can go bigger than that. I think one of the most important things about the Science Fair Contest is that 